John Krasinski was bad mouthing a movie, and P.T. Anderson said, "Hang on, yeah, don't say that movie's bad because that person was trying. They're trying to do something different. And when you say you know movie's bad, and then that becomes the, the culture around this movie, it gives us less license to take chances with our movies That's and to take. I yeah. disagree. <laughs> Sorry, P.T. <laughs> Big fan, but I disagree. <laughs> Big fan. <laughs> Big fan. Big fan of all his work. I don't think he's made a bad movie. No, I, don't I think so. guess you've proven me wrong. It's easy for him, who doesn't make bad things, to say <laughs> never that criticize others because he doesn't even know what it feels like because he only makes good things. But some people don't care. Some people do not care, and they still make it anyway. Hit <laughs> him. Welcome to Filmhouse, everybody. Uh, this week's episode is sponsored by Mac Weldon, the world's Best menswear's essentials. Uh, my name is Daniel. I've got Elise Willems, James Willems, Hello. and Josh Flanagan with me today. Hi. Super guest bud. How are you doing, Josh? So good. You ready to talk about some movies? Yes, I am. Right Thank on. you for it's asking. That's all he ever talks about. Thank you for asking. <laughs> or we tried to get him on a different yeah. show. He refused. It's like oh, movies no. or his chronic talking, pain. Talking about glass? <laughs> no. <laughs> how, how my chronic pain feels like glass? You're a Mr. Glass. Yeah, what did you think about glass? I haven't seen it, but I hear it's great. <laughs> From the comments? Yeah. <laughs> A um, little bit of housekeeping up front. Uh, last week, in the past couple of weeks, we've had a few uh, episodes of this show where there's been no little trailer videos at the bottom, and everyone wants to point out that we've forgotten it. Somehow we're all of a sudden idiots, and we've forgotten to put up the trailers. But we've been getting a lot of copyright strikes or claims against videos, uh, especially the Glass and the Spider-Man one. Um, there seems to be no rhyme or reason to when these strikes happen. So if there's no video down at the bottom, someone decided to claim copyright on a trailer. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, but to fix that, while you guys talk about the movies, I'm going to describe what's on screen. Oh, cool. Okay. And okay. like really like, why whispers? Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so so we, we didn't forget. We're just, uh, we're trying to figure out why they're getting struck. Um, also, another uh, housekeeping event. People keep saying watch Super Dragon Ball Super Brawly. No, they keep asking what we think about Dragon yeah. Ball Super Brawly. And? That- Broly. Is that the movie that made ten million, like at the U.S. box office? That mm-hmm. was like a like top three of its weekend. It was crazy. Didn't, yeah. Did your Huge. brother see it? What? Your brother saw. My it. brother saw it. I haven't seen it. What do you think? Was your brother's? Review? I haven't talked to him about <laughs> it. I assume okay. he enjoyed it. Everyone that I know who has seen it says it's great. Here's the thing, though. I don't watch Dragon Ball Super. I haven't watched Dragon Ball Super. So to go see a Dragon Ball Super movie. I'm a little hesitant because yeah. that's like you're a fan of Friends, but now they're making a movie about Joey, and I don't watch Joey. Um, so I don't know, but I've heard it's great. I will probably watch it eventually. I got a little soured because I watched Battle of the Gods, which was not good. Um, what did you say? No, nothing. There's something. <clears throat> um, Josh worked on that. But movie. I have yeah. heard it is very good, and when I do see it, I will make sure to let every single person I've ever spoken to about it, know how I felt. All right, so enough comments about have you watched this movie. We'll let you know when we do. I will tell you. Um, so yeah, uh, look, a little bit in the news this week. It's uh, January is pretty rough for movies, news, and films. Um, we got a little teaser for Birds of Prey. I know everyone's super excited oh, about oh, Birds of Prey. It's terrible. This um, looks so fucking shitty. How, <laughs> how do you get make a movie like Suicide Squad and you get essentially three sequels. You get this, you get Suicide Squad 2, and you get a standalone Joker, Joker. movie out of such such a, an abomination. I, I don't, I would love oh, to be wait. in the room for that Because meeting. I think that as bad as Suicide Squad was, people did love Margot Robbie in it. Yeah. They did, it won an Oscar. It won an Oscar. I mean, it made a shit ton of money. It, it, it made yeah, money. The big thing is it made a shit ton it of made money. Shit ton of money. I, did enjoy, I enjoyed her as, um, as Harley Quinn. Like, I, I think yeah. she's just fun to watch. I, I, I do think it's people love Margot Robbie. When, mm-hmm. when the first suicide, yeah, I don't think I don't think she's just that great of so Harley true. Quinn. I think she's just a likable human being. Um, I, I remember when the first Suicide Squad trailer came out, and it like ended with her going like she didn't even say like a pun or whatever. She just had a bat, and she's like, "Let's go!" And then everyone's like, "Oh, it's finally Harley Quinn is real! <laughs> finally! Oh, thank God!" I was like, I was like, this is. The lowest common denominator. It's just because Margot Robbie's good. 
But even isn't and she this basically the same thing. isn't she basically doing a, an Arkham Asylum impression though? I I don't know. I just I was never like ah. Oh. So well, it, also it's just like it's just wackiness. Yeah. It's just it. Oh, she's got a drink. This is literally a screen test just that they decided <laughs> to put up to promote it because they know you don't give a shit. <laughs> like they they I, are just having drinks in the think, back lot at Warner. I think Margot Robbie is great. And I think she is trying, and she probably really likes playing Harley Quinn or whatever. She but it's cool outfits, man. It's yeah. all just the lowest common denominator shit. Dan, do you know who's directing this movie? Oh, like, no. who who are the? I'd be curious to know the creative Can leads we look? behind Can we, this yeah. film. Because maybe there's maybe there's more to it. Maybe I do believe they've it. given it to a female. That's to right. Direct. A female. A woman. female. Mm. Check <laughs> the uh, chromosome male. <laughs> Um, I just think releasing something like this is such a low effort. Oh, it's it's like, clearly a, a screen test. Name. Like yeah, Harley they're Quinn clearly just whatever. seeing how some of the costumes look. Yeah. When does it does this come out this so year? Is it is it 2019? I don't know. Uh, this is 2020. This should be okay. Next so that yes, yeah, so they don't have jack shit. They don't have it. anything to show, but they still said, "Why don't we just show nothing?" Kathy Yan. And that Kathy tells Yan. me how they feel, or at least how executives. Where uh, Warner Brothers marketing feels about this movie, which is they're gonna eat my shit and I don't care. Well, I don't know who this is. <laughs> Kathy Young got me sweating. I don't know what she's done. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, the the one interesting thing that I saw that someone pointed out about this trailer is that you can maybe see the difference between the male gaze from Suicide Squad and the female gaze with just the way Harley's portrayed and mm -hmm. how she's dressed. It's a lot of butt in Suicide Squad. A lot yeah. of butt. A lot Does of she dirty. Not have butt in this. I mean, I, we don't know yet. She's we're in a sports we're, bra. And I mean, don't get me wrong. Everyone likes to look at butt. You everyone know? likes to look at butt. It's yeah. a little less trashy. A but, little bit more glam. Butt is one of the most universal things. It doesn't matter yeah. your sexuality. You're into butt. I Even just, if you're I, asexual, you're still like, well, I like the butt. I just don't want to fuck it. <laughs> I just feel like the male gaze is not the problem with Suicide oh. Squad. <laughs> if that's your what you walk away from that movie critiquing, like, you got you got some bigger issues. I think. All right, I've had enough of this. We've uh, trained Warner Brothers to know we don't care. A um, so. little bit of news on the Dooku front. Yeah, what? I know everyone's real excited. I know. Uh, Is it back? No, it's actually officially done. Um, but the Invisible Man is greenlit with the director from Upgrade, mm -hmm. Lee Wannell. Okay. I haven't seen Upgrade, but people say it's, it's pretty good. fucking rad. It's good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's cool. Um, it's like a futuristic John Wick. Yeah. Johnny Depp no longer involved. Well, he, they said he won't be appearing in it, which I think makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> he, stay, he still may be portraying the Invisible Man. He just won't be appearing in the film. Okay. But <laughs> so I, I think Universal's actually done the right thing here. Um, Peter Kramer, uh, Universal's pr president of production, says the studio is excited to take a more individualized approach for their return to the screen, shepherded by creators who have stories that they are passionate to tell. So they're going to focus on giving filmmakers that actually have a vision uh, the ability to make these movies instead of just creating some huge universe with you know a studio stamp on it. They don't sure. want to force it. Yeah, so that so, sounds like good PR to me. Well, and if they actually do it, I think that's probably the right way to bring these characters back. Yeah. Yeah, if there was a way that these, because uh, don't get me wrong, like I thought the Dooku is a really fun idea. I love those universes, and I think we've we've talked about like Night in the Lonesome October, the Rogers Lazney book, uh, which is kind of like taking classic characters and putting them all together, and so that kind of made me excited for the Dooku. Um, the but Mummy they, ruined that. But they did that already. They did, it was called Monster Squad. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, <laughs> 1987. We always talk, we talk about Monster Squad about once a day here. Um, Let's do it again. Though, the if there's an organic way where it seems like these movies come out and they go, hey, well, maybe there's an opportunity to mix my world and yours. I'm totally down for it still. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. all you're going to get is Invisible Man. <laughs> <laughs> no Bride of Frankenstein? I, I would say that, like, the Invisible Man may actually stand, because there are, it's not like there's every 20 years there's another Invisible Man movie. Right. So there probably is an interesting there's take on man. that story. Yeah, I guess there was a Hollow Man. <laughs> I don't true. know. We'll see. I, I don't, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Blumhouse, they've been on fire recently, I think. Um, Jason Blum is attached to produce. Mm -hmm. um, all those other people, uh, Depp, Bardem, Tom Cruise, Russell Crowe, I guess they have the option should a uh, filmmaker they're interested in working with attach themselves to Bride of Frankenstein or whatever, uh, those guys can get back in. 
but uh, it looks like it's dead. But didn't they take all the time too to do a bunch of PR with all those people? Like, there's yeah. all these photo shoots with like all six or seven of those people. Yeah. Like, look at this team we've assembled for this. But they're all photoshopped together, which is the best part. None of them were in the same yeah. room together, and Tom Cruise <laughs> is like eight feet yeah, tall. Yeah, I was gonna say six foot five. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm one inch taller than Tom Cruise. So. Ooh, right. look at you. Yeah. So I, I know our fans like us talking about the Dooku, mm-hmm. so I figured we'd touch on that real quick. Dooku's um, back, but also done. Just some, like the classic Dooku form. <laughs> something I'm actually re- really stoked for is uh, Denny Villeneuve, uh, however the fuck you say his name, Villeneuve, uh, is making Dune. Yeah. Uh, should come out next year, but there's a lot of casting talk. Um, Timothy Chalamet is going to be Paul Atreides. Stellan Skarsgård Scar- Scar- <laughs> is uh, Baron Harkonnen. And Oscar Isaac is probably going to be uh, Duke Leto. I don't, know, I don't know. Have any of you guys read Dune or I watched I've never Dune. read it. I've seen yeah. like the David Lynch one. Yeah. Yeah. This movie's no yeah. good. Which is, yeah, not good. But, but I've also, I feel like I keep hearing that people think it's an impossible thing to adapt into a movie. It's it's pretty tough. Uh, the book is amazing, but it's one of those stories that kind of like throws you right in the middle of a lot of political intrigue without explaining where you are and why. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, you know, like a 600 page book too. So there's too much going on for one movie, um, but I'm still, I love that book so much. I'm very excited for this remake. And it's one of the few things in the news. So yeah, oh, yeah. T- Tumblr is creaming themselves that Oscar Isaac is playing like Timmy, Timothy Chalamet's father or whatever. Honestly, maybe a little young if I'm going to be I picky. I think so too. He's yeah. like he's supposed to be this ki- this you know king who is old and wise, kind of a big mentor. And Oscar Isaac maybe seems a little young to be the old wise king. Yeah, it was, yeah. I was say he was old and wise in X Men yeah. Apocalypse. So point against him. I him sold it. I guess. Short. Yeah, Those wide shots in Apocalypse. I, I feel like time. this Dune movie is going to be. Uh, is going to be really good. Like, everyone's going to go, holy shit, this is the best version of Dune ever, and it's going to make no money. Yeah. Just like Blade Runner <laughs> yeah. 2049. Yeah. It's going to be a really rad movie that not enough people see. Yeah. Because it's going to be probably three hours long. It's going to be awesome, though. Yeah. It's going to be so cool. Um, all right, so uh, on to maybe our major topic for the day, uh, in addition to the news. Uh, so... We want to talk about films that are wonderful, great movies that you never, ever want to have to watch again for one reason or another. And maybe we can talk about commonalities as to why there's an amazing movie and you never have any interest in seeing it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'll start. So I saw Silence last year. Uh, Martin Scorsese, you know, one of the best directors of all time. Mm -hmm. Hates the Japanese. Hmm? Martin Scorsese hates the Japanese. (laughs) He does hate the Japanese, I guess. Um, but it's a great movie. It's it just it's too long, too plotting. Um, you know, there's powerful filmmaking, lots of wonderful shots, really great acting, even from um, Garfield, who is pretty iffy, I think. But I think the the themes of the movie are about you know your your own personal religion and how how much horribleness can happen to you in life and still keep that. Dedication, faith. the it's faith. faith. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that's tough for some people, especially if you don't have faith, you might not be interested in the movie at all. Um, but it, it's beautiful. And it's in, you know, feudal Japan, which is pretty fun place to visit. I, I watched this on a plane. Oh, boy. And I mean, that may, that may have been the best scenario because like you're trapped yeah. with it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really enjoyed it. And it is long, but it flew by for me. Oh. Literally, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it flew by for me, and it. F- some movies are long, and they don't feel like epics, and that makes them seem re- like this movie feels long, and it also covers a long period of time and a lot of ground, and there's so many locations and new settings and new challenges and stuff that I, I actually kind of really enjoyed it. I get what you're. There's some scenes that I think that I would just like never want to see again. Yeah, is it like graphic a graphic or brutality or like? Yeah. There's but, a lot yeah. of brutal torture. There's definitely some torture. I would say it's not like Passion of the Christ, where it's like, oh, I don't want to see the blood and gore. It's more like, God, they came up with the absolute worst, not blood and gore way to yeah. torture someone. Yeah. Well, um, it's, it's says he's a master filmmaker, so he doesn't necessarily need the gore mm-hmm. to get across, like, the horridness of the torture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And speaking to commonalities, like, torture for me is, like, probably number one. Yeah. Like, I do not want to see people be tortured. Um, and Or, you know, not just your your 
when you think of torture of like someone being tied up to a chair and tortured, but no, something like Passion of the Christ where it's just, it is torturous. Mm -hmm. Um, Uh, Also probably an excellent movie. Yeah. But I'd never want to sit through that again. It's just gore for for two hours. Yeah. Um, But Elise, what's a movie that you really love and think is excellent but would never (laughs) like to watch again? Oh, I thought of the the top one in my list I don't love. And oh. I, I never want to watch it again. Would you recognize it as a good movie? Uh, I get. Maybe I not. think it's a, an important movie. It has some important themes, but uh, Solo, A Hundred Years of, of Sodom. It's a garbage movie. <laughs> oh, God. It's a garbage movie, it's kind trash. of. But it's it's it was like one of the worst viewing experiences of my it's life. Terrible. Um, it's just, about like Sodom and Gomorrah. In, I mean, it's it's tied to themes of like biblical themes, and it's tied to uh, Dante's like Divine Inferno as a template of torture. But it's like these college students in Italy are abducted by these um, aristocrats and taken into the mountains, and like they do shit to them. Uh, but it's supposed to be a metaphor for like fascism in Italy. It's it's just like uh, it's a ride, and like like these kids aren't allowed to poop for days, which is my personal like <laughs> like because like I always tell James like if I don't poop one day, like take me to the doctor because I'm going to die. Like it's just not possible. After for me. one day? Yes, absolutely, hundred oh, no. percent. Huh. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. You would How's today going? <laughs> it's well, good. Well, also when they do poop, they're like forced to eat it. Oh my god! And it's like, it's just like the worst. It's it's my what classic. What movie is this? Solo. <laughs> What is it? Solo 100 Days of Sodom. Put it on my Netflix days. DVD it's list. It's like 100 Days of Sodom. Um, you still get the DVDs? I just restarted it. it. You ever, what a hero. Oh, you ever Solo. hear about something like either a book or most often cases a movie that's described as just like like horrific but you're intrigued? Mm-hmm. Like, like Serbian Tale. Or yeah, not Serbian, Serbian, it's Serbian Film. It's a perfect, it's a perfect example. <laughs> Serbian Tale We're, sounds like, <laughs> like Fido is going to Croatia and he's... And uh, but you like read the Wikipedia article, uh-huh. and you're like, "Oh my god, how, this must be so compelling!" Or like, you're so interested in it, and and then you're just like, "Oh, so this is an example of having watched it." Yeah, read the Wikipedia. <laughs> okay, it's you get everything that the movie gives you, and it's faster, it's <laughs> and you don't have to watch it. The movie is so excruciating. When you're not doing torture, it's just you're you yourself are being tortured. Just the worst. Extended dialogue sequence. Hey, Deer Hunter. But something mm-hmm. I, I like is like um, uh, Sympathy for or Mr. Vengeance. That's on my list. Is yeah. Because it? it's an one excellent one film. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, but I like Sympathy for Lady Vengeance. It's a feel good movie. Uh, I, will, I will watch that many, many times. Because yeah, it's feel good. Yeah. Um, old Boy, I, I don't like Old Boy as much as people like it. Yeah. Like, I mean, I like Old, old Boy a lot. But I think that I'm gonna say out of the three, Old Boy of the Revenge trilogy, Old Boy is my least favorite. Still acknowledging really? that that it is amazing. Yeah. But something about Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance is just so, so fucking. It's such Real. a downer. It right. all starts from just like one bad decision that spirals out, and then it's just constant. Sometimes there's situations generally in like television dramas where if one person just spoke up. Right. And just explained it, it would all be resolved. Yeah. And this is the kind of thing where it's a movie that's all that over and over again, except it justifies not being able to explain it in the scenario. Like something happens. Mm-hmm. And God, it's just like watching some one mistake just lead to just the domino fall of just shit. Yeah. And dry humping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and it is, it's just. It's hard to watch. It's yeah. really hard to watch, but, but man, it's excellent. It's so good. It's so good. Um, but yeah, like you said, sympathy for Lady Vengeance I've is seen that more, a bunch. way more cathartic. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. it it it's you feel at the end of it like you're like, oh, okay, I feel better. And Old Boy is great, but I think Old Boy is, you know, maybe better made. But in terms of just like that narrative of it, it's just like it's, it's so. Yeah. But, Speaking of Park Chan, have you seen Little Drummer Girl? No. No. I really want to watch that. I know. I was hoping that someone would tell me it's good. I did see The Handmaiden, though, which was my favorite movie of like a year or two ago. The scissoring? The scissoring with the little the metal balls yeah. or whatever. That You talk about a feel-good ending. 
Hemi's, yeah, Hemi's is excellent. It has got like it three is. turns in it. It's incredible. It's yeah. it, I would stand by it. Like it was like the best movie of two years ago. And it by was, the way, it was fantastic. He was a film critic before he ever made a movie. So mm-hmm. suck on that, PT Anderson. <laughs> 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 He was calling other things shit before he showed everyone how much better he was than them. <laughs> so, Josh, are there any really great movies um, that you never, ever want to see again? I think, I mean, the the standard one that I feel like comes up a lot is Requiem for a Dream. Yeah. yeah. Which I've seen, I have I actually seen twice. I saw it in the theater. That was one of the few movies that uh, I got to go see like before I was 17 like my mom took me to see it she's like you, oh need, to see, you need to see this movie wow uh, yeah that must have been traumatizing uh, I mean I, don't know. I mean I don't know your relationship with your mom I guess no it's I mean, fine I did accidentally go with my mom once to see um, Eyes Wide Shut oh that's she nice she didn't not just us it was a it entirely turned into a double date because we were going to see I was supposed to go see American Pie they wouldn't let me go see American Pie by uh-huh. myself even though she was buying the tickets so like, you gotta mm-hmm. go to the movie with your mom so me and my friend went with my mom and her date to watch Eyes Wide Shut. So for That's context, cool. Josh's Which, uh, mom has seen Aquaman three times. She has. If you want to know how that movie reached a billion dollars, <laughs> it's, it's my mom. She was literally. I shit you not. She she uh, was in a group message today saying she was headed to Burger King because she just found out that they are giving away toys in there. Your mom sounds pretty room. cool. Yeah. She, d- d- yeah. <laughs> no, she's very cool. Just her movie opinions are. Hey, there's nothing wrong with <laughs> Aquaman. <laughs> Um, I did you buy should. her a big Aquaman fleece br- blanket for Christmas, though, Aww. so I feed the <laughs> obsession to somebody. Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah. Eyes wide shut. Or um, Requiem for a Dream. So, um, I was thinking of his other pie, too, before oh, this. Yeah, is also a great oh, movie, yeah. but I have no desire to see it again. Yeah. Um, I've only seen this once. Yeah. I think a lot of his movies are this way. Yeah. What was the um, Mother? Mother. Was that mother. Yeah. Mother. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe, Maybe you're better great. off just not watching that one. Yeah. <laughs> I think what's what I think is interesting about these movies, though, is that it's not something you consciously think about. For me, what happens is I think about a movie like like Requiem for a Dream, and then I suddenly realize that it's actually been like 15 years since I've seen it, mm-hmm. and then I don't think about watching it again. Because you got it. Yeah. Not that well, you well, yeah, didn't what, necessarily get it, but yeah, I I was gonna mention one. Can I mention one, Dan? Sure, sure. Well, I was going to say, what what comes to your mind when you think of Requiem for a Dream? Sorry to cut you off. I mean, ass to ass. Is yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. the oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the, it's the yeah. yeah. And the saw, that arm the, getting the sawed arm. off. Yeah. The, uh, the, the gore. The yeah. most disturbing for just, that whole movie to me is that, that old woman's downward spiral, though. I, that, yeah. right. That's what I was just going to say. Like, her thing, because isn't she obsessed with, like, a refrigerator or something? There's, like, There's, like a game show or something that she thinks she's going to get on, and then she starts taking pills to make herself skinny. Skinny. Oh, God, yeah. She's, because she's just... Like you said, it's a downward spiral, so it's just you're just seeing the constant progression and, of and, it. In some hard. some case, some ways, her scenario is the most like opioid epidemic in a uh, developed country kind of mm-hmm. thing because they're like head. the uh, the the other characters are all kind of like crime me, you know, like right. they're young and they're like obviously they got into it over their heads, but it's still like they commit crimes to do things, and I think as like a regular person, a middle America person or whatever, you're like. Well, I'm not going to commit. I'm not going to just start doing heroin. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about getting my arm cut off. But she's just like a woman who's lived her whole life. And then this one thing that should have been okay sent her down this spiral of just self-destruction. So is that that the common denominator then with all these is that they're all sort of downward spirals and they all usually have bleak endings? Uh, I have one with a very uplifting ending. Oh. Ready. Because it's at the beginning. Oh, no. Irreversible. Oh God! That's uh, the Beyonce song. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd say I've only listened to it once. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, you're irreversible. Wonderful I movie. I don't fuck. know this movie. Irreversible. Oh really? Monica like Bellucci. Gasper now. Monica Bellucci. You haven't seen this? You should watch this no. movie. No. This movie is. I'll give you my DVD. This movie is a masterpiece, except for the part at the end where it becomes really French and flashes on screen everything beautiful, beautiful must die or whatever. Beautiful and young Monica Bellucci. So, so this movie, every single, the last scene of the movie is the first scene. Okay. So it's all pl- plays out in reverse, and then every fall, every next scene is the scene that would have preceded it. So it's like Memento. Yes. Similar. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah it is. It's like Memento. It, it's just, it. I think it's not confusing. Yeah, like the Memento. timeline's not confusing yeah. at all. But basically, out of sequence. basically, the movie starts at the end with these two guys rushing into a weird sex club and murdering the fuck out of some dude. Okay. They just like brutally murder him. 
Vincent Cassell. Vincent well, it Cassell. actually starts it's off with two guy. people like having it's a conversation in a room nearby, and the camera doesn't stop moving. It's like a single shot, yeah. and the camera's just, it makes with, you like, sick. With police lights, yeah. and then they drag some people out of a club, and then the next scene is spiraling through the club, and then the next scene is what happened in the club, and it's these two guys show up at the club, beat some dude brutally to death, and then... Uh, and then it keeps going back and back to these guys are look these there are two dudes looking for this guy mm-hmm. and uh, goes back goes back goes back goes back ultimately you find out that they're looking for this guy because uh, Vincent Cassell's girlfriend Monica Bellucci was just brutally raped after he got into an argument with her. Mm-hmm. And she left the party alone. They were supposed to leave together. Yeah. Also, the other guy is also kind of in love with her, but she's brutally raped. And you like find out, oh, that's why they're chasing down this it, dude. That, that oh, okay. scene is one of the hardest mm-hmm. things I think I've ever yeah. like. Uh, you're literally there's kind a of, point, you know, looking away. There's from the a screen. point where you see it's one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. Where you see the they set the camera down okay. and leave them there in this empty hallway. It's like, a ton- actors, it's like a tunnel under a road. The two actors to just do whatever they were going to do. Okay. Like the direct, no one was present. And there's a point where you can see the camera get set down so that way everyone can like leave and they can do their shit. Mm-hmm. But it's all one long shot and it's it's brutal. Hmm. It is brutal. Yeah. All you can do is just think about how Vincent Cassell and Monica Bellucci are a real life power couple yeah. Yeah. to get you through it. Yeah. That's the only thing you can do. But, and but, listen to the Beyonce song. But then the <laughs> worst thing about it is after you've been through all this anguish, by nature of how the movie is structured, it ends with all the good times. Yeah. Right. They're all you happy know, together. Like, it would be like a revenge thriller, yeah. but told backwards. It's mm-hmm. like So then it's like all the good times, and that's what you're left with at the end of it. And so knowing it is worse. And then there's also, I will say this, what makes this stand out more than some of the other ones that I had on my list is that this movie needs to be watched twice. Does so it? it makes it so bad. And I won't say why. I can tell you guys afterwards. Okay. But you, you're supposed to watch this movie twice. Um, and that's what makes it even worse. Because okay. it's like now you're trapped in it. <laughs> <laughs> but God, it's so good. It's so good. Dan, but, do you but, have one? but seriously, one of the worst things I've, I've, I've yeah. seen Terrible. in my entire okay. Terrible. He also, at the beginning of that film, uh, I think all of his films are probably like this. You probably want to see him once because they make you marvel at his filmmaking skill but they disgust you and make you want to throw up Mm -hmm. but at the beginning of irreversible he's also he's playing a frequency uh that's hard to hear Mm -hmm. uh i forget what hurt rate it is or whatever but um it's actually known to make people feel ill while the camera is kind of spinning in circles Mm -hmm. so it's it's a real mind fuck yeah wait so see this trailer you're playing right now and enter the void yeah Guess what? Guess what? Netflix DVD I have right now. Ooh. Enter the Void. Oh, have sitting, you seen that? Sitting, no, sitting Same in my guy. house right now. Same guy. Streaming. Because I wanted to see. I saw the trailer for that climax movie uh-huh. that he did yeah. recently, and it looks so insane. I was like, I think I'll see that. And then they were like, It's the guy that did Enter the Void. I, go, I haven't seen that either. So I'm, I'm doing my own backward tale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's and true. I assume it's not going to end well for me when it you get to the not. beginning of my story. No, and he, he is a fascinating filmmaker, but yet yeah, all of his stuff is rough. Yeah. It's just hard to see. Um, if I've got one, here's another one. Um, I think there's a lot of great movies that you only want to see once. But Russian Ark, it's uh, it was a film. It was shot with one shot. There was they, I think they did it a few times, but they did the whole movie with one camera moving through this Russian palace. And just as a technical achievement, it's fascinating. Is but it's supposed to be the Romanovs. Honestly, I can't. I can't remember. Okay. It, it, it didn't have that much of an impact on me that I remember. I remember getting really tired of it. Um, but the just the technical feat of yeah. executing this like a flawless play essentially um, was it was it was fascinating to watch once. For God's sakes, I'll never ever watch it again. Mm-hmm. Is the um, is the movie boring? Is that like what's the what's the flaw? <laughs> it's just like really pretty. It's, but then it's you're Russian like, history, um, and it's in Russian. I don't you know. It's been so long. I just remember being kind of blown away by what they were doing, mm-hmm. and then not at all taken in at the actors or the story that was going on. So it's um, all that they basically f- took a giant Russian palace. And, it's a museum now, I think. And set up a bunch of different time periods. So mm-hmm. like you're basically like, oh, we're going in this room. Everyone get ready. Get your marks. <laughs> and then they do a ballet from like the 1800s. And then it moved. Then the next room is in the 1900s. Cool concept. But yeah, I cool can concept, see how but... just you're like you. 
you never stop to ask if you should. I think, kind of. Yeah, I, I also know nothing about Russian history, essentially. Well, so you know everything about Russian I, history. I think being completely lost in the story didn't help. Mm -hmm. um, oh, is this Ron? I've seen Ron. I, I, I love Kurosawa, but it's it's a movie. I'd, I'm glad I watched it once. Yeah. Um, but I never need to see the it. The ending I, is great, though. Yeah. Like, the, uh, I won't spoil it, but there's, I, there's great gore. There's a really great gore shot at the end of this movie. Th there's another Kurosawa film called uh, Matadayo, I think. And it was, like, I think one of his last films. Mm -hmm. It's really... Uh, it was good, but, man, it's so fucking boring. It's just about this old teacher who is, like, what it's like to be in his retirement or whatever. And then at some point, the bombs drop, and they're like putting their lives together again. But I don't know. The, the, the only thing I really remembered <laughs> it was the fact that there's a cat with testicles mm. that he liked for friends, <laughs> which is something you don't see very often. Um, I, I think some movies on my list are, are movies I might have seen in like film school screenings. That yeah. like, yes, this this is a great moment in film history, but I never at all need to revisit it. Yeah. It's just too dry, too hard to follow. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of uh, UT... And Austin has a great uh, like film library on campus, and so I used to do, like between classes I would go and like rent a DVD of whatever and check it out. So I ended up watching like Seventh Seal or something, mm -hmm. whatever it's okay, called, yeah. and like all like stuff like that, like mm -hmm. just random movies. I'm like, oh, this is on the AFI Top 100, and mm -hmm. I would just like burn through them all. And so yeah, you end up watching a lot of like one-time things. Like yeah, I appreciate the craft of this. I'll never watch this again. I but. think it's like the Criterion Collection um, <laughs> conundrum where you're like, oh, man. Criterion, Criterion Collection has curated all these films. They're supposed to be just amazing gems. None of them seem interesting to me. <laughs> like it's like you don't like French New Wave. Uh, you know, here and there. But I think Solo was part of that Criterion Collection, so, and oh, we didn't see how that worked out. I, well, I have one movie that, like, I guess most people find it reviling and tough to watch, but I actually don't. And it's Melancholia. That was on mine too. Yeah. But you oh, don't. Uh, you have a hard time watching it. Yeah, yeah, See, yeah. for me, I, no, I could watch that a hundred times. Because you have depression. Because, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's because, I think it's because if you if you have ever experienced depression, you just relate to it more. You just can kind of, it's like reading between the lines. You see the matrix and you're like, oh, yeah, I, I, I identify with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't, this isn't hard for me to watch. It's just oh. uh, an but externalization. It's, so. It, it, I've never understood depression better than watching this movie. Yeah. Um, what, what's going on here? So it's a two part, you wanna, t it's like. This is your favorite movie at least. It's not my favorite movie. I just think I could watch it and it fa does not phase me. She's getting married. So this is the inverse of, of our subject. She's getting married um, to a Skarsgård, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then kind of just like on the eve of her wedding, she's like, nah. Well, <laughs> it's, it's like the most beautiful it's supposed to be the best day of her life. Yeah. Her whole family's here. She's in a magical it's thing. It's, it's just, ceremony. It's just amazing. And she seems to have a see, she's got perfect it all. husband or whatever. And then at a certain point, she just like walks away and she's just fucking miserable. Yeah. And then her sister's like, what is your problem? Like, we've done all this for you. What is your problem? Why are you being this way? And then the like, husband's like, can we bang? Like, yeah. it like transforms from this beautiful day into the harsh... It's like sad as truth perfect as everything is, she can't r understand why she's still sad. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so the ha scenes where she's happy, you're gonna have to cut that. Um, the scenes where she's happy, <laughs> it's like really fake and stuff. But there's also a world-ending event that's going to occur. Right. I would say then the second half of the movie is it fast forward, and like there's there's a comet. <laughs> that's headed towards Earth. It's like two completely what? separate what? movies. Yeah. There's a comment that's headed towards Earth and everyone is flipping their shit, but she's like, cool she's, as a cucumber. Yeah. She's like, hey man, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. a comet blows, blows into Earth. <laughs> and it's really interesting to see how her depression affects like the joy of humanity and then also the suffering of humanity. Yeah. And she's, but she's the same. Yeah. But I, I was like watching it and I was like, God, this movie just must be like, what it's like to be depressed. And I was reading about it, and it was Lars von Trier was dealing with his depression, so he wrote a movie about it. <laughs> so what, what is it that brings you back to that movie? I don't, I, I mean, it's visually it's beautiful, it's but I think it's knockers. just like, it's relating, yeah. you know? If you can watch that. <laughs> is that what brings you back, Elise? Yeah, I think if, if you can look at that and go, oh, this is an externalization, 
I have I never finished this movie. Yeah, oh, I like this. I don't know why this is on the, this the list. The coward Robert Ford and yeah, it's like three hours long. The yeah, coward, it's too long. But coward. it looks beautiful because it's Roger Deakins. Yeah, so he's the it champion. Looks, it looks beautiful. But I think there's a commonality between a lot of these great films that I never want to see again, and some of it's when they're three, four hours long. It's just too much. Yeah, too much. Well, I have one that's short. Yeah, the orphanage. El Orfanato? El Orfanato, you're yeah. right. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, because The Orphanage is a different movie that people confuse with. I, I remember once recommending El Orfanato to someone. They went and rented The Orphanage, like an American movie, oh. and then were like, that wasn't that good. Are you sure it wasn't The Orphan? <laughs> oh, The Orphan's great. I don't know. <laughs> with their fake teeth and, <laughs> yeah, um, it's so good. Yeah, the, this is a tough one. I've the Orphanage is tough just because it's it's a horror movie that's even scarier once you get to the end. Right. Um, it's, well, it's, yeah, it's built on a twist, and when you know the twist, it's like you're yeah, like, all right. Well, it's hard for me to watch the rest of this movie because I know watch a, the movie ever again. It's a depressing twist. Knowing the twist, yeah. knowing the twist, it's not scary. It's just sad. Oh, yeah, no. um, it's still a good movie. And I've seen it I also good. watched this with my roommate Jake over a Christmas break where we were staying in LA for Christmas, and all of our roommates were gone. So it was just he, me and him. So we decided oh. to go see this movie. We came back really late at night. And the door was ajar. Oh no! The door was a, is ajar, and one of the lights was on, and we were like, "Oh shit!" Like did someone break in? And we pushed. And this was after we had seen this movie where there's there's a scary kid with yeah. a sack mask, and then so we like pushed the door, and neither of us stepped actually into that house, and then that's when we realized one of our roommates had come back early and left the door slightly ajar. Oh, I think I know that roommate. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> She's the kind of person that would leave the door open. Um, so, yeah, if, if you're really freaked out after watching El Orfanato and need to change your underwear, throw those out. Get yourself some Mack Weldon's. Um, they make the best in the game. Mack Weldon is a modern men's essentials brand that believes in premium fabrics, smart design, and simple shopping. Mack Weldon makes men's essentials elevated by technical innovation. Your Mack Weldon's will be the most comfortable underwear, socks, shirts, undershirts, and sweats that you will ever wear. I know I treasure my Mack days. These essentials are designed for daily wear, and they don't just look good, they perform well too. You can wear them on weekends when you walk your dog, or to work when you're paying the bills. They are perfect around the house or outdoors, and especially at the gym while you're working on your fitness. Mack Weldon has a premium silver line of underwear, shirts, and socks that are naturally antimicrobial, which means they eliminate odor, keeping you fresher for longer. You can do your yoga or your squats, and your gear will stay stink-free. Mack Weldon is so confident you will love their products, they feature a try-on guarantee. If you don't like your first pair of underwear, you can keep it and still receive a full refund. They also offer free shipping on all orders over $50, and they always have free returns. So go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off your entire first order using promo code FILMHOUSE20. That's promo code FILMHOUSE20 at MacWeldon.com. So let's talk about some more horrible movies we never want to watch again, or actually great movies that we never want to watch again. Yeah, mm. well, we've been burning through them. I'm we've looking. I'm just peeking at your list here. My um, girl. Oh man, I love using that as a <laughs> verb at people. Like when I, it's like a threat to put bees in their like you know desk. <laughs> like I'm gonna mu- fucking my girl you. It's That's awful. Yeah, it works well. It's a fine movie. Do oh, they back down? They yeah, they always do. Um, the I will say this, My Girl was, this is totally unrelated to anything, but My Girl was the first movie where, as a kid, I realized that actors look different in real life than they look in movies. Because I remember, I was like in love with that girl. I thought she was the most beautiful girl ever. I was like, I don't know, eight. And, and then I saw her on an interview and she looked totally different. I'm like, that's not My Girl. Oh, and that's when you that knew that is. women that wear makeup <laughs> deceive you. Yeah, it was a trick. It's all a trick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then you had that you had that South Korean wife, and then you you had kids, and they were all ugly, and it turned out she had had plastic surgery, and so you sued her. Mm-hmm. Right? Have you read my book? <laughs> <laughs> are, you t- are you referencing something <laughs> that's going way over? My-, my girl has like a sad moment, but I don't know. Th- this just falls into the category of just like rewatchable, but you just turn it off before the end. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Like, it there's is certain movies that aren't like I can't stand to sit through this again by nature of the film and then other movies that are like, oh, don't you hate that like part at the end where it's bad or whatever? Like I think about like Radio Flyer. Oh, yeah, Radio Flyer is great. They're like, it's a fun movie, but at the very end you're like waiting for the moment where the dad's 
the abusive dad's going to come in and they're trying to get the thing to go and they're like, and then he launched away and I never saw my younger brother again. It's like, he crashed, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so there's certain movies that I'm like, I really enjoy watching, but I just don't want to stick around for the last act or whatever it may be. Yeah. Do you think there's going to be a trend change though? Because I feel like some of these movies, like people watched because your choices were so limited growing up or like they were on TV or this is what was in theaters and now it's it's a you know free for all you can watch whatever you want so like you can I know like Netflix uh, like CEOs done interviews about like how do you get people to watch better stuff and not just junk feed like how they curate your feed and things like that and uh, I don't know do you feel like people are going to be like these movies that people barely watch anyway are going to like slide even further back as like you know probably more cooking shows pop well, up there's always <laughs> A spot in the carousel for the critically acclaimed. Yeah, <laughs> and that's where these. I I feel like they hang out. I just thought of a movie that Is I saw. It relevant? It's not on this list, and it's relevant. It's so fucking good. I haven't seen it again because I just it was made me so stressed. Whiplash. A oh, Whiplash is whiplash amazing. Is so good. Oh yeah. Um. I loved it. I love J.K. Simmons. Not my J.K. Simmons. Not my tempo. This is <laughs> yeah. not my tempo. He's not my tempo in this movie. He is too mean. <laughs> um, Oscar winning performance. Not my tempo. But it, it's so good. I just I just can't. Why would you can't? It's stressful. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's an anxiety, you know, pill in the form, or not pill, but anxiety uh, crisis in the form of a movie. Like, mm -hmm. just, just when he's, the way J.K. Simmons is abusing him and you're watching it and you're like, I can't. Yeah. I was I was cleaning my house when I when I just threw this movie in, and within like ten minutes I had stopped and was just glued to my couch for the rest of the <laughs> runtime. Like it's 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 a you're just uh, yeah. I just Nadia love that. Nadia <laughs> wasn't there. <laughs> but have you seen it yeah. since? No. I only saw it the one. Supporting too. your theory. It's just yeah. it's just hard. Oh. So oh no! <laughs> Not this round. Is it because you like J.K. Simmons and you don't like seeing him be so awful? It's he was it's already a, awful to Spider Man. Why is this kid any different? Hold on, guys. He was awful to uh, the older brother from the television version of Weird Science in Oz. Oh, so right. Spider Man is not the you, first time he was made. a bad guy. He kind of <laughs> played an Aryan um, for a really long time. How many Whoops. times? How many times did you watch Oz? I watched Oz a lot. I mean, it's this <laughs> kid that that feels it's this kid that's being singled out in this class. Yeah, it's, he's between a rock and a hard place. He's already really talented, and this guy's making him second guess his talent. And right. I, I just, I have a problem with like people in creative spaces who feel like they can abuse the people around them because they're creative geniuses, which is like J.K. Simmons' whole MO in this. Yeah. I really just don't, that bothers me a lot. Can I take the counter argument here? As someone who's ridiculously talented, <laughs> I, my, whole, my whole life I've wished for a mentor like that who could push me over that edge into the sun. And I, he's, I haven't found him yet. So if you're out there, <laughs> reply in the comments below. <laughs> Maybe they haven't seen. Let's find you that mentor. <laughs> <laughs> we should get Josh. It's mentor. buried. Right. Um, have any of you guys seen Elephant? I have not. This no. movie's fucking brutal, um, just because it's too real. Um, for you that don't know, it's kind of a it's kind of a Columbine movie, where it's very much a Columbine movie, but it is um, very documentary like. The camera's kind of just Van Zandt? yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a few filmmakers I think that would appear a lot on lists mm -hmm. like this. Um, but it's it, it's one of those movies where the camera just kind of hangs out and watch the things that are happening very mm -hmm. clinically, uh, which just makes it feel that much more real. And then it shows the action of the shooting a few times from a few different perspectives. Um, it just it hits you in that place where you're like, I'm watching something that it looks like how it might have happened. And it, it hits hard. So how much of the movie is the shooting and how much is just like the, yeah. the tension is it, build The main up? premise is the school shooting. Yeah, That's well, that, that is point. the entire premise. Yeah. And it, oh, okay. it is uh, like, what was it, Klebold and I forgot the other guy's name. Good. Um, yeah, they should, <laughs> they should be names. forgotten. But, it, you know, I think this is a movie, you know, I think this might be 10, 15 years old now, but mm -hmm. is just is modern and comments on things we're going through right now. Do you remember if it was watching. like controversial when it came out? I, I think it was. Uh, it, not to, I don't want to spoil something about it, but it, it takes a, a few things that people said about those shooters that might have been rumors and makes them real. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't necessarily give you an explanation of why they did what they did. Um, it's just you know a, a day at this school and then things go wrong 
and it, it shows it a few different times from a few different angles. Um, hmm. So the the shooting is I, I, I don't know, 20, 30 percent of the movie. Okay. Maybe. Um, but yeah, just too fucking real. But it takes place over one day. Yeah, it's just the one day. Gotcha. There's another movie that's too real like that. I can't remember the, the name of it. The one, but the woman that lives in the motel near Disneyland with oh. her kid uh, came out last Florida year. Florida Project. Florida, yeah. Florida Project oh, yeah. is yeah. too real. It's good. Yeah. It's excellent. Really yeah. But it's just you just feel filthy after watching it. And you're like, eh, I yeah. Know. I feel like every year the Os- the Oscars are always like the best barometer for. There's always like two or three that are like, yeah, pretty good. But then like eh, the yeah. once is enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have yeah. So an- another movie that I think is oh, amazing. Boy. Oh no! But it, no, it's a horrible oh, no, downer. No. Um, and uh, I mean, for our audio, I should have said something about spoilers up front. Um, oh, this is a trailer um, for Grave of the Fireflies yeah. for any audio listeners. Yeah. Um, but this is a beautiful movie, uh, but it is fucking brutal to watch. Uh, eat the dirt, uh, eat the dirt yeah. crumbs. It's just, it's just, <laughs> uh, orphans of World War II. Yeah. yeah. And, fun, fun, while fun. while yeah. we're bombing Japan. And it's just like, but it's just brutal. <laughs> oh, yeah. and I, two, two kids trying to survive on their own. Um, after their mother gets burned to death, essentially, yeah, uh, and they run away from their evil aunt it, or something like that. There are still people out there who have doubts about like the like animation as a medium, the power, and not a genre. You know, like and like who animated films are for. This is like, I mean, this came out years and years. I mean, this is like eighties. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. but like. It's funny to think that we can still have that debate to did it today when this movie already exists. And it's not for. There's, yeah. it's yeah. not for anyone. I'm not old enough to watch. <laughs> we bought this like ten years ago or whatever. We kind of bought it blind, where we were like, "Oh, Miyazaki, let's buy it." I wish we had. Why didn't we buy Ponyo? Oh. Why didn't we <laughs> buy? Hell's we better, we better if he told you it was Ponyo and then hit play. <laughs> well, this when, this, when this originally played in Japan, there it was a double feature with Totoro. Oh. So, you which one came it's, first? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. What would be better? I don't know. I feel like you got to watch this then, Tony. Yeah, you need a palate cleanser. It is depression fest. But amazing, like, right? Um, yeah, no, it's yeah. incredible. No, yeah. yeah. I don't know if I never, ever, ever need to see it again, though. No, I don't think so. Um, so there's another little commonality in movies that I think are on this list, and it's movies where the dog dies. Mm-hmm. Um, what is This is Marley and Me. Uh, I, feel I like haven't the, actually seen this. I haven't either. It's a movie you need to see. I feel like people that... I, I've, no, I've never seen this movie come up. I feel like people watch this movie more than once. I could be wrong. I've I, never seen it. Well, I think the only attribute about it that people don't like is that the dog dies, right? Right, yeah. Which is, you know, I mean, you don't want the dog to die, but again, that feels like a My Girl type situation. Right. Where it's like, oh, well, you can have a fun, lighthearted romp in a silly, slapsticky, goofy movie. Yeah. But... You just have to understand that you turn it off before the last 15 minutes, you know? Yeah. I feel like I watched like Old Yeller dies. multiple times as a kid. Oh, was that Jennifer Aniston or <laughs> Owen Wilson? <laughs> it's nowhere where you needed to be. But they buy a dog it's and Jimmy it dies. Jimmy Stewart. They say Phoebes. Phoebes. Say you don't know. <laughs> when she says Phoebes, you don't know if it's Jennifer Aniston or Owen Wilson. <laughs> um, I, I've heard you guys talk about Hachi. Oh, it's would terrible. You, would it's you ever watch movie. it again? No, I would never watch it again. Because it's not a good movie. Oh, it's, it's poorly made. Uh-oh. And then that's what makes it even worse. How'd you go? Is that I was weeping like a child <laughs> at the end because it's the story of the, the actual dog in Japan from, I think, Shinjuku well, or whatever. I don't think it's the actual story, but it's just like based on that story. Oh, wait. What, well, is, no, wait, I mean, yeah. Yeah. what does Richard Gere do with that dog? Is he, it? he makes love to it. Ooh. No, he, he basically... Do you you have you been to Japan? I have. You know Hi. that statue of the dog? Mm-hmm. That oh, be, that's what it is. It's that they oh. basically t- made that into a full length movie with white people. With white people. Is it in America? Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh. And and it, but they still call him Hachi or whatever. But it's <laughs> the same kind of dog. It's as a ghost that in the dog. shell kind and of thing. And then basically randomly at this train station, they Richard Gere finds a puppy. Oh god, I can't. <laughs> He's are, so are we gonna get brave. James Gere? I can't do it. Uh, the dog, oh, so no. he makes it. The dog makes it. What? No. Well, the right? story is that he be, he has his beloved owner, and he always waits for his owner to come home from the train station at work every single day. Mm-hmm. But Richard Gere one day goes and then has a brain aneurysm or something while he's at work, and so he never comes home to the dog. 
So the dog keep but the dog keeps going. Can you put your so arm around James John? So the dog <laughs> the, the dog keeps going to um, wait for him. At though. the train station every day. Yeah. It's so sweet. And the dog looks exactly like my dog. Oh. Who had died like six months earlier. Does he so does Richard Gere come back? Yeah, he they rebuild him again. They actually it's a real it's like basically like mostly stuffed hay. Yeah. Which is kind of a face on it, and the dog is convinced. I thought it was going to be, because I, I mean, not knowing the story of Hachi, the, I thought the dog was, he was going to go out and the dog would not be there, and it was going to be like a minority report, like a crime, like a missing child crime thriller, except it's the dog. No. Like I left him at the arcade machine, and he's. <laughs> it's also weirdly set up because, like, there is no happy ending in that movie. Like. What happens to the dog? The dog just gets old. They just go like, oh, they, man, it's like yeah. hard cut and they're like, now the dog's old and the dog Aww. lives under the train tracks because the family moved away and it, the dog didn't want to, they were like, come with us. Yeah, so, but the dog did, so was like, no, if, if I leave, I won't be here when he comes home. Hmm. And so the dog is basically homeless for his whole adult senior but life. But all the townspeople take care of him because they know how to go, how to no, go. Yeah. yeah. But no one takes him in. <laughs> and he doesn't he, want it. Well, he doesn't, he, doesn't he refuses it. because they try and take him to uh, away from the train station and ultimately the resolution is that the wife, Richard Gere's wife, comes home and is like, she comes back to visit the town and she's like, it's okay. Like, it's okay, Hachiko. You can die now. It's okay. Like, don't, oh. you did it. You did a good job. It's okay. And then Hachiko dies. Huh. And that's it. Uh, spoiler, and then they, like, though. Build a statue for it. There may or may not be a scene where Hachiko gets sprayed by a skunk, but someone else has to deal with the skunk that spray is true. as well. Yeah, the first half of the movie is like a slapstick <laughs> skunk. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Gere, how are they going to take care of this wild dog? And then the second <laughs> half is an old dog dying a slow, miserable death. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty awful. Um, any anyone got anything else? I, I mean, there's. I think there's a lot of these movies. We can yeah. go on forever and ever, but we've we've got a podcast here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot. You got your Schindler's List, your Price Passion. You got Zookeeper. <laughs> okay, good. Zookeeper. Uh, Elise, could you watch Robin Williams movies still? I mean, I still do. You do? I just. I mean, I see a picture of Robin Williams and I get emotional because <laughs> I I love that man. You know, and honestly, you know, the hardest thing for me that's gonna be for me right now to watch is Super Dave Osborne. Oh. Oh yeah. Because uh, uh, no more curb for you. Bob Einstein just passed away. Yeah. So, but uh, Robin Williams. I mean, it's just what a beautiful man. <laughs> a beautiful man. Uh, we, we were talking about P.T. Anderson at the very top. Um, I think he's an amazing filmmaker. I don't know if I ever need to see There Will Be Blood again. I watched it a second time. I loved really? it. Really? Yeah. I mean, I didn't. Wa- I watched saw it in theaters, and then I only maybe in the last two years or whatever it was on Netflix, and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I'll watch it again. I was like, yeah, it was better. I really? actually enjoyed it, yeah, because the pacing in the theater felt very unconventional and very long. Yeah, but it felt better watching it on like Netflix at home. Hmm. I only I only saw it once, but I did not like it, so maybe I'll watch oh. it again and it will uh, it'll cause a revival. I guess and to your point of irreversible, you have to watch it twice. A newer one that you did not go with me to see when I saw it the second time was Hereditary. Oh, so good! But I think you need to watch it a second time. Oh yeah, hmm. um, I thought that's definitely a candidate for this because that movie is fucking stellar. But I, 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 mean, I was given the rough. option to watch it a second time and decline. But I think that's no personal things. preference because I don't find it yeah. unwatchable. I for will multiple say times. that that theater being in that theater maybe it's just because you were in there, but that was the most tense theater. <laughs> uh, I was there. Yeah, <laughs> that, I, that I sat in all year. And I like you know I saw a Quiet Place and that was fine and fun. But like man, that Hereditary like it it just like it, oh, it's got gotcha. you. I had a great time because I knew when everything was coming. Yeah, and I was thinking I was sitting between you and John Reisinger. So I was just back and forth. I was just waiting <laughs> for like to see you guys react to stuff. Mm-hmm. It was fantastic. You did that to me last night when we were watching Inside Number Nine, <laughs> yeah. and when like the sound would cut out, you'd be like, <gasps> like looking like, <laughs> oh, got you. <laughs> we, gotcha. well, we just because when we did it, we were fucking with the whole thing. <laughs> so I was like, you would be like, what's going on? So I was like, oh, but did it to laptop? <laughs> It's like my own personal like like uh, to four, 4D. Yeah. What did you guys show watch? <laughs> Inside Number Nine. What is that? Oh, it's like my favorite oh. show. It's like it's like uh, dark comedy, Black Mirror, um, Black Mirror minus technology, dark comedy it's with almost like two, a little Tales from the Cryptish. Too. Yeah, very much Tales from the Crypt. Two guys st- write and star in every episode of it, um, and it's all one location. Uh, it's pretty great. I've brought it up on this podcast a few times, mm-hmm. um, but they did a Halloween live episode in October, 
and it was brilliant. A live mm-hmm. episode. Because I mean, yeah. live, you know, in England. Um, we all, I had to watch it on BritBox after the fact, but um, if you were watching it live, it was a very fun experiment. Mm-hmm. And these guys are brilliant. Yeah. I love them. That was a weird little trailer. All right. Um, well, thanks for coming around, you guys. Uh, a lot of these movies, I, I think there's a lot of them that are great. Are there any commonalities you guys can think of other than maybe length or some horrible, brutal scene that you never want to live again? I mean, there's emotional attachment. Sometimes yeah. when you when a movie creates a character that you like a lot and puts them through a lot, whether or not it's good or bad, sometimes that's that's emotionally exhausting sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I just don't know that I always have the strength for it. Yeah, you kind of put it with Robin Williams. There's an actor that you like or don't like. You're like, oh, this movie is really good, but man, I hate watching so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Or, or you hate realizing that you'll never see a yeah. new movie with him again. Josh, what about you? I was, I was trying to figure out his trailers, and I was really like, this is a movie I've also only seen once. Yeah. Hostiles. It was, it was a pretty good movie. Yeah. I'm never, ever going to watch it again. No. Um, uh, no, I think it's, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's just downers and you have to be, I think like my mode when I watch that stuff is, I mean, I, I think I've actually kind of felt that going into this year because I realized I just watched a bunch of garbage last year. And so this year I've been more like when I'm in more of like a high art minded, like I gotta, I have to consume good things and be smarter. Then I start watching stuff that I know is going to depress me anyway, just because I'm there for the craft a lot of the time. Yep. And there you right. have it. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, thanks for coming around. I'll see you guys next week. And if there's anything that you guys think is an excellent film that you never, ever want to watch again, and we didn't mention it today, uh, comment about it and let us know. Yeah. Hopefully, stop talking about uh, Broly. So thanks for coming around, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Yeah, thank you. Wouldn't you want him to do something impressive? Exactly. Well, those aren't old zoo bars. How can you? He can't bend those. <laughs> the, only, yeah, the only thing any of these characters can do is... Old bend old zoo, zoo bars. Old zoo Glass bars. can bend those old zoo bars. It was, it was just they some have weird decisions. wood here so he could walk through the, In the grass mud. and not get muddy? Yeah. It was a little dated. I'm supposed to take that away when you do oh, the overhead no. shot. <laughs>